Welcome to Electra Online. Our next example is the same as we did previously, but instead of rotating the area bounded by the line y equals x and the curve y equals x squared, instead of rotating it about the x-axis, we're now going to be rotating it about the y-axis. So you get kind of a parabolic bowl with straight uh, sides on the inside, but all the way around like that. It's kind of a strange looking bowl, but hey, it would work, I suppose. And uh, we're trying to find the volume of that. So how do we do that? Well, in this case, we're going to slice it like this. Again, the reason why we slice it like that is because we had to put a washer. You'll see in just a moment why that is so. So if we slice it like this, not only do we end up with a washer, but the nice thing about it is that the inside of the washer will be bounded by the straight line and the outside of the washer will be bounded by the parabolic curve on both sides of the washer. And so it's exactly what you want all the way from the limiting point, the zero, zero, all the way to where the two lines meet over there, one, one, and negative one, and one. So that would work out the best. Let me draw what that washer would look like. So here's our washer on the outside here, like so. Then do too good of a job, but at least I think you can see what it looks like. So that's the washer right here. If we slice it like this and we take it out, since it's a volume region like this, you can see that that's what it would look like. The inner radius right there from there to there, that, let's call that R1, and the outer radius, let's call that R2. And the thickness in this case would be dy, because it would be this thickness, thickness right there. So this thickness right there would be a small little dy. And R1 would be the distance from the y-axis to the inside of the washer. So that would be R1 right there. And then the outside radius, that would be R2, would be like that. Now you can see here that the inside radius would be from 0 to the x of the straight line. So that would be x1 right there. Let's, let's call this your x1. And let me get rid of these subscripts on the y. We no longer need those. That's from the previous problem. So that will become our x1. That's the distance from the y-axis to the straight line. And it would be an x value. And so therefore, we label that as x1. The distance from there to the outside radius, that would be the distance from the y-axis to the curved uh, function here, the y equals x squared function. So that would be your x2 right there. OK. So now what we can do is we, we can replace r1 and r2 by x1 and x2. Okay, so our volume then, our dv, which is equal to the surface area of this washer times the thickness dy, and the surface area would be equal to the area of the whole washer if there was no hole in it, so it would be pi times r2 squared minus the area of the hole, pi r1 squared, so that will give us the surface area of that washer, and then times the thickness will give us the volume dv, and of course, instead of using r and r2 and r1, we're going to use x2 and x1. So this is equal to pi. We can, we can factor out a pi. That would be x2 squared minus x1 squared times dy. Now, we're not quite done yet um, because we can't integrate x's and y's in the same integral. So we have to convert from the x1, x2, y1, and y2. So since x1 is equal to y, we're going to replace x1 by y. So this can be written as pi times y squared dy. And instead of x, uh, x2 squared, we come over here. x2 squared is actually equal to y. So we can replace that simply by y. And now we're ready to integrate. Now we have our volume, our, our little uh, volume element dv. And we can then say that the total volume will be equal to the integral of all the dv's, which is the integral of what dv is equal to. We'll take the pi outside the integral sign. We have y minus y squared times dy. And the limits of integration, we're going to integrate from the bottom of the bowl, which is y equals 0, to the top of the bowl, where y is equal to 1. So from y equals 0 to y equals 1 are your limits. And now we're ready to integrate. So this is equal to pi times... And I guess we don't do it like that. We use brackets. So we go y squared over 2. So you add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, minus y cubed over 3. And the limits of integration are from 0 to 1. So now we go ahead and plug in the upper limit. So this is equal to pi times, that would be 1 half minus 1 third, because uh, when you plug in the 1, you get 1 squared, that's still 1, and 1 cubed, that's still 1, minus when you plug in the lower limit, and of course, when you plug in the lower limits, you get 0, so you don't need to do that. And then you combine those, 
by getting the same common denominator, which would be over 6. And since 2 goes into 6 3 times, this becomes 3. 3 goes into 6 times, 6 2 times, that comes 2. And so therefore, the volume would be 1 sixth pi. And there you go. That would be the volume of this weird-looking bowl. That's how we do that.